high mark. Can you hear me, Barry? Yes, I can. Okay, great, thanks. All right. Okay, it is um, 7.30, so I'll call the meeting to order at 7.30. This is the Transportation Committee meeting for Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, um, and I'll do roll call. Um, I'm Barry Johnson here. Mark Rubin? Here. Joe Perry? Here. And Abby Velasco? Here. Thank you. Um, and Randy is excused.
excused. She, he might j- join us later. Um, so we do have a quorum. And uh, agenda item number two, approval of January 5th, 2022, Transportation Committee meeting, meeting minutes. Um, if there's no objection, I'll consider them approved. Any objections? Hearing none, they are approved. All right, um, update by the committee chair, number three. Um, all three of our motions passed at the board meeting in January, including the one for traffic calming measures on Vineland Avenue between Fruitland and Lancashire. Um, the motion supporting um, alternative six heavy rail for the Metro subway proposal um, under the mountains from Ventura and Van Nuys to Wilshire and Westwood. And our third motion that passed um, was for the Bureau of Engineering with the assistance of other agencies uh, to report back with recommendations for improvements or changes to the city sidewalk programs including uh, sidewalk replacement. Um, and I will go on to, oh, also I should say in the update that um, I drove um, with two of um, Council Member Rahman's um, deputies along Ventura from Lancashire to Fulton. Um, we veered off Ventura a little but I showed them a lot of uh, transportation issues. Um, we each took our separate cars and stopped at like 15 different places. Um, Abby will be glad to know we stopped at Vineland between Fruitland and Ventura. Um, we discussed the traffic management plan up in the hills, you know, where there's signs for no right turn going up Brightwood in the morning. Um, we are hoping the Ventura Berry signal gets turned on this month or March. Um, we revisited the CBS Keep Clear sign on Colfax between the alley and their gate C because it gets blocked in the with morning traffic. Um, we. I showed them the state of the alley behind Ventura between Colfax and Carpenter. It's, you know, Pothole City. Um, we went into the Slow Street program in the Silver Triangle and discussed, you know, the upcoming permanent program. Um, the Ventura Roads Smart Walk signal that's coming. Um, showed them the Ventura, I mean, the Whitsit and Valley Spring signal that we had sent a motion to call on and also a motion for Coldwater Woodbridge signal. Um, and then also, if not there, for sure, a Coldwater um, Valley Heart signal, um, which I was there today and I crossed. I was I parked on Valley Heart and crossed Coldwater, and there's no crosswalks, but I think it really needs a signal, and they agreed, and um, that's kind of a summary of all our stops. So at least it put all those things we've been working on um, in their heads. So I am going to go on to public comments by um, on non-agenda items within the committee's jurisdiction. Um, and I see we have Rudy raised his hand. Rudy Melendez, go ahead. Thank you, Barry. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, it's been a while. Um, Happy New Year. I recognize a few names in the room. I just wanted to say thank you to Barry for addressing my email um, from last week, a, a concern that we have inside and just outside of the Studio City Neighborhood Council boundary on Tahunga northbound, uh, just past Sarah Street, uh, the Caltrans Metro project and the Soundwall construction 
has turned into just a, a, a disaster. Now that the sound walls are up, the K rails are still in place. There is so much trash and graffiti now on the K rails and the work that they've been doing. Uh, and we want the K rails removed. And we keep being told by Krikorian's office that it was going to be last September. And prior to that, it was going to be before that. And so, you know, it's just one of these things that they've just allowed to languish. And I re really appreciate any help that I can get from this committee, Barry. I know that you are directly connected with a lot of these people. And I just really appreciate the help. Um, we also have um, an encampment that's just on the corner there. I know it's outside the scope of this committee, but just so you all know or, or aware, there's a, an encampment right there at Sarah and Tahanga. And it's a product of the just the overall blight, the broken window theory in this portion of uh, the neighborhood. And they've jumped the fence and there's some things there now collecting and we've had stalled cars and RV situations in this corner. And there's a car truck that's parked on the southbound side of the Hunga that's been on the island in sort of this no man's land for three years now almost in a tent. And um, there, nobody seems to be doing anything about it or addressing the situation. So. Um, thank you for that, Barry. I know that you sent some emails. I hope that you hear from somebody, anybody about this. And also in your uh, not, report. Not yet. And in your report, no. you know, showing these people this alleyway between Colfax and Carpenter, which is just, you know, I mean, if you live in Studio City or anywhere near there, you've probably driven down this alley once or twice. And it's just beyond me that nobody seems to do any just even a little bit of like quick create fill in in this area um, nobody's expecting it to be completely excavated and redone over but can't they just not simply patch this in a way that makes it a little bit more palatable driving you know i i i frequent a couple of the businesses there so i usually use that route and it's just you know it sucks and uh, so thank you for bringing some attention to that. Other than that, I hope that everybody's doing well. And I'm sure I'm forgetting to talk about something, um, but uh, thank you for the work that you do, Barry. Oh yes, I did remember. I know in seasons past, we've done some work on the pedestrian tunnel at Lancashire where it feeds into Kawanga and, um, and, and Ventura Boulevard near the studio Universal, the Red Line Station. And when I passed through there recently, um, you know, the graffiti is back up and stuff. I don't know if we're still monitoring that situation, but if, if we can maybe address that um, in the future with any context that you might have with the government affairs relations at the studio, that would be great, Barry. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, Joe, did you have a public comment or did you want to wait till number five? Maybe it's a committee member comment for the. For okay. The May yeah, maybe we'll, we'll wait till, the, till okay. we get there then. Sorry. Okay. Call, caller ending in 255. Hi, I, sorry, I just joined the Zoom. Is this time for general public comment? Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Stalamares. I spoke previously at the uh, Studio City Neighborhood Council board meeting on the Sepulveda Transit Corridor uh, project in support of the uh, motion from this committee. I wanted to give you a brief update and let you know that there is a sign-on letter that's been prepared by a number of organizations um, that uh, has a number of components to it, including uh, looking at how Metro can study um, the risk of displacement to renters due to rising rents, um, looking at um, the alignments and making sure that um, there is a station at UCLA and a station at Ventura Boulevard um, and a whole bunch of other things. I know there's not enough time during uh, general public comment to go through it all. 
I wanted to let you know um, this is being considered by a number of neighborhood councils. And uh, although the deadline for Metro to accept public comment is next Friday, uh, I think it would still be timely if the neighborhood council considers um, the sign on letter at its next meeting. So I would respectfully request uh, that this committee at its next meeting uh, place this item on the agenda uh, for consideration. And I'm happy to send it to you by email. Um, can you send it to transportation at studiocitync.org? Will do. Thank you very much. And 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 you just you should know it, it's possible that our president may want to send a letter, but our committee doesn't meet before that metro deadline, and neither in our board um, meeting is after the metro deadline. So he might decide to, you know, again send on the motion that our board did vote with a, a letter. So I'll, I'll pass it along to him. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. Um, I see we have Melanie Winter with her hand raised. Go ahead, Melanie. Thanks, Perry, appreciate it. Hi, Farmars. Um, I emailed you earlier, Barry, I was today and it should have been before that, but here we are. Um, in, an overview of an initiative that is being proposed in Los Angeles and um, I sent along a, a briefing on it, as well as a proposed uh, letter of support. This is one of those things that overlaps transportation and sustainability. Um, the nutshell is a Healthy Streets LA ballot measure that will require the city to implement its mobility plan 2035 whenever the city repaves or otherwise works on a street. Um, uh, background being that, you know, the plan was passed in 2015 and there were over 3,000 miles planned, um, but only 95 of those have been implemented in seven years. So that's like 3% of it. Um, it looks like we need some more, we need to get more, find a, a mechanism to implement our own plans. <laughs> basically, uh, to reduce traffic and give us safer streets. And we always talk about more pedestrian friendly studio city. Um, this would help that make our community safer to walk and bike and get around in. So uh, they're currently taking uh, two pathways, getting a measure on the ballot, which they're looking, they're picking up signatures to do. Um, but they're also uh, in the process of, of developing an ordinance, proposed ordinance. So there's two possible pathways for this, and we're just looking for um, support from neighborhood councils. So um, I mailed that along. I think it'll be on the agenda formally for sustainability if Adele takes it up. Um, but again, this is one of those things that overlaps transportation and sustainability. So I wanted to get it in front of this committee. Okay. Thank you. Um, and for number five um, responses, I was just going to say, yeah, I, I, the last I looked at my email about six o'clock this evening, I didn't see anything from you yet, Melanie. So, uh, but I'll look when we're done. So, um, yeah, I'm interested in seeing what it what it says and everything. So, it, have any council members? signed on to this and, and are making their own motion to city council? Uh, I think that, I believe this sort of uh, ordinance approach is in process and there is, yes, there is support uh, among some council members. Of course, they would need to get, you know, majority of council members to get an ordinance. So they're taking these two pathways. One is a council ordinance and one is a ballot measure. One requires a lot of signatures. The other requires herding cats. Sure. Well, I certainly would think that our um, South Studio City Council member, Raman, would certainly be interested in perhaps doing a motion. And, and she's probably got at least one other person to sign on with her. So. Yeah, I think, I think we've got a couple of council members, but we need eight. Yeah, yeah. 
So, okay. so the more letters of support that are that are you know around out there from neighborhood councils, um, the better. Even if our even if one of our council members is inclined to support it, we do have two. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, well, and our other one might support it too. You know, it's hard to say. It is hard to say, but that would that would be a, that would be terrific. Uh, but it never hurts for us to have a motion out a motion letter of support out there, and it would be really great again to have a letter of support that was you know joint two different two committees both on the same page about the issue it would be great sure okay all right i'll look for that thanks thanks so much um, and i was just going to say for thanks to rudy for your comments but i was also going to mention today i saw caltrans out replacing chain link fence on Vineland between the 101 and the Beverly Garland property, which, uh, and I, they were also repairing the fence in the back of the Hollywood Bowl parking lot a couple of weeks ago. And I actually, that day I stopped and talked to them and the Caltrans foreman said that they are in the process of uh, um, repairing and replacing a lot of the chain link Fence, um, you know, and, and and I just have to say, I, people need a place to sleep, that's for sure. But people never should have been allowed to be within an area that Caltrans has signs saying no trespassing. It's just dangerous. It's not no trespassing under a freeway, but within their freeway buffer zones that are chain linked in and at freeway on ramps it says pedestrians prohibited you know caltrans did nothing to stop that from happening to begin with and then it just you know went went wild so i'm i'm glad that caltrans is um making those repairs all right um moving on to number six Discussion and possible motion with respect to new signal configuration at Ventura Boulevard and Radford Avenue, causing backup into the Ventura Laurel Canyon intersection, which then becomes gridlocked. Um, and many of you have told me about this. I've gotten like four different emails on this. And, and most of the emails were, you know, I don't understand why the traffic backed up into Ventura and Laurel's intersection. And then I have to give them the whole long explanation of how right when the pandemic started, it was it had already been in the works, but when the pandemic started, they changed the signal timing at Ventura and Radford. It used to be that going north on Radford, um, south on Radford, I mean, or north out of the Trader Joe's parking lot, that was all one signal um, portion. They have separated them. So now there's one signal for when you're going south on Radford. There's another signal, and, and that allows you to also make a left turn without the outcoming traffic from Trader Joe's parking lot. You know, but then out of the Trader Joe's parking lot, they have their own signal and left turn on to Ventura. And this has all taken away time from the traffic on Ventura Boulevard. And you'll notice that also backing up going on Ventura going westbound, it'll back up to Carpenter, but it's not as bad as as it is when it backs up into the Laurel Canyon intersection. And that's what's happening. And I'm just gonna read you a proposed motion. The board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, requests council member Nithya Raman to direct the Los Angeles Department of Transportation, LADOT, to investigate the new signal timing at Ventura Boulevard and Radford Avenue causing traffic to back up into the Ventura Laurel Canyon intersection, which then becomes gridlocked. So that that's the motion and um, I'll open it for any members of the public first who wish to speak. Does anyone wish to speak members of the public? Um, all right, I don't see any um, and I see 
I will go on to members of the committee. Joe Perry, go ahead. Um, it's not, I would just like to add that it's not just gridlock, but I see pedestrians sort of, sort of threading their way through traffic that's in the crosswalk that can't be seen and sort of darting and trying to cross through gridlock. It is so dangerous with that gridlock that I would add that it's a danger to pedestrians. I mean, it's horrendous. It's, it's really scary. All right, anybody else? Um, so, uh, Joe, I would, I would add then I'm, will make this addition to this um, motion. Um, at the end where I said, which, which then becomes gridlocked and a, um, well, that endangers pedestrians. It, it, which then becomes gridlock and a and a danger to pedestrians trying to cross through that gridlock. Yeah, and that's a big pedestrian, you know, Laurel and Ventura. A lot of people get off the bus there, cross there. It's bad. But I think that um, covers us. On that. Thank you. And I I dropped my pen and I'm okay. grabbing another one just so I can add that to the end. And then we've got our bases covered between. Uh, and Joe, are, have you think we should mention bicyclists? Absolutely. That's okay. a great idea. It's really it's never been a great place to cross on foot or on a bike. Now, I mean, I've st when I'm waiting to make a turn, and I I've seen things that are just you know hair raising, and they and the pedestrians can't really be seen by the cars yeah. frozen you know in the middle of the intersection, and they're all in a hurry, and people are using creating a lane on the right to sort of speed through. It's bad. It's terrible. So. Um I have, which then becomes gridlock and a danger to pedestrians and bicyclists um, trying to cross on their green light. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Go ahead, Mark. Yes, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Um I'm in favor of this motion, obviously. Uh, I just want to point out an additional, just point out something. Uh, I would guess uh, of the people I know here present, I would guess that uh, I cross that intersection on foot more than anybody else uh, who's present here tonight. Maybe not, but- Except that's me. <laughs> uh, possibly Melanie. Um, uh, but uh, quite frankly, uh, the worst, worse than that intersection is crossing Ventura at Laurel Canyon from the, from the southeast corner to the northeast corner, from the shopping center to the uh, Chase Bank corner, uh, because uh, invariably, regardless, almost regardless of what time of day, but certainly during rush hours, the southbound traffic on Laurel Canyon turning left onto eastbound Ventura uh, is always gridlocked with the left turn light. And when the left turn light turns yellow and then red, uh, it's like three, four, five, or six cars continue to turn left there. And if you're trying to cross the street, especially if you're going from the southeast corner to the northeast corner, because that's where they're turning. It's a little bit better if you're going northeast to southeast. Um, generally, you can use up the entire walk signal time uh, with the residual cars running the red, the yellow and red light going through there. So I just wanted to mention that. And certainly the gridlock produced at Radford uh, adds to that. Thank you. Thanks. 
Um, anyone else? Well, I, I think what we added to the motion covers all the gridlock in that intersection and, and really any way where you're trying to cross if you have a green light. Um, it just becomes um, a danger. So go ahead, Richard. I'm wondering, do you think it would help if there was no left turn coming out of the uh, Montecito, whatever it is, that driveway where the McDonald's used to be? They just said, so you couldn't turn into Ventura Boulevard and you couldn't turn into, into Ventura Place. Does that help? Yeah, I I think we're trying to do too much here. We've got to base this on the fact that they changed the signaling and they did it during the beginning of COVID. So we didn't really realize it really till this past September when everyone was back in school and so many more people were back at work. Um, so I think for now, we need to get this fixed first and not go on individual driveways. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Can I, can I just make a comment really quick? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I cross there a lot, um, as well as Laurel and Ventura, but I also use that particularly interesting intersection several times a day walking Maisie. And I, I noticed that it's different. I, it's a weird intersection. I appreciate that they've made it safer, but I, I sense everybody's impatience with it. And I, I think a lot of it has to do with people trying to jam through often. And then like, like Mark said, that Laurel and Ventura, people are not respecting the signals and they're trying to get through. And that creates as much of a gridlock problem as anything else does. So I, I just, it's just a comment that part of this is people's people's impatience and people's expectation that, you know, traffic is going to move at a certain speed and it's going to be, it's going to serve them on their schedule is all. But I do appreciate the added safety that the new signal adds. And I understand that it creates an extra minute or so of wait for everybody. That's all. Thanks. Yeah. And, you know, people don't, don't, uh, pay any attention to the don't block intersection signs. They still end up blocking them. Yeah, I spend so, most of my uh, time crossing Laurel and Ventura shooting people the stink eye or staring them down. Like, are you kidding me? You know, it's just, that's every time I cross, that's, it's, you have yeah. to like, stare at people incredulously, like, seriously? Why? You know. <laughs> okay, uh, Rudy, go ahead. I'm, yeah, I'm compelled just to <clears throat> offer my observation. I I don't walk that crosswalk, but I think it's fair to say that intersection may be the busiest intersection in Studio City with the traffic cut through over Laurel Canyon in both directions. And also it's a really wide intersection. And I don't know if I'm understanding the whole complexity of this, but maybe, if, I don't know if we could advocate for brighter paint on the ground in the crosswalk and I don't I'm not into more signage but just maybe broader brighter paint and uh, if that's not already being done but yeah as a motorist I, I don't even I don't even I avoid that intersection at all costs if I can I don't I never rarely turn left onto Ventura Boulevard as I'm going north on Laurel Canyon when I pass through that intersection, it's usually just Laurel Canyon going north up and over the hill and to the other side uh, or uh, coming back that direction by sometimes I'll turn right. But and then, you know, I don't I, I, I bank at first entertainment. So I usually am in the parking lot behind. But it's just a that's a gnarly intersection. And it's I'm sure I'm surprised there's not more incidents there. Maybe there are. I'm just not aware. But it's definitely, I appreciate that the, the consensus here is that there's a concern, a public safety concern there in that area. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, seeing no further hands, I'm gonna um, read, read the motion one more time before we take a vote. Um, the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, 
request council member Nithya Raman to direct the Los Angeles Department of Transportation, LADOT, to investigate the new signal timing at Ventura Boulevard and Radford Avenue, causing traffic to back up into the Ventura Laurel Canyon intersection, which then becomes gridlocked and a dang- gridlocked and a danger to pedestrians and bicyclists trying to cross on a green light. Um, do I have a second? I can second. Okay, second from Abby. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, all in favor, say yes or raise your hand. I'm a yes. Mark, yes. Joe, yes. And Abby? Yes. Thank you. So it's unanimous. Thank you. All right, moving on to agenda item number seven, discussion and possible motion with respect to the stop sign at the northeast corner of Kling Street and Goodland Avenue um, being ignored by drivers and possible options for mitigation. Um, Kling Street between um, Coldwater and Whitsitt is very narrow. It's narrower than any of the other streets even in that neighborhood, which mostly don't have sidewalk. And I drove there today, when, you, uh, when you're when you coming south on Coldwater and you make a left onto Kling right after you've gone under the 101, and I was driving east on Kling towards Goodland, and right before Goodland, there's a large shrub, maybe 20 feet before the stop sign, So it's even basically, um, you know, it blocks view of the stop sign. And I think that street is so narrow, it needs, not only does it need that shrub trim back, it it may need speed humps. Um, So my motion, basic, I'll read it to you. And uh, it's basically asking the council member to ask DOT to investigate some options there. So here's the motion. The board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, requests council member Nithya Raman to direct the Los Angeles Department of Transportation, LADOT, to investigate possible mitigation, comma, for drivers ignoring the stop sign at Kling Street And I'm sorry, I I added something in here. Let me start over. The board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council, SCNC, requests council member Nithya Raman to direct the Los Angeles Department of Transportation, LADOT, to investigate possible mitigation, comma, including but not limited to, comma, speed humps, comma, for drivers ignoring the stop sign at Kling Street and Goodland Avenue. Um, And that is my motion. I'm not mentioning the shrub because they're going to figure that out when they investigate it. Um, It's it's just obvious. So um, I see Joe has her hand raised. Go ahead, Joe. Mistake. That was a mistake. Oh, okay. Um, Anyone, any comments on this one? You know, this is uh, putting it in our lap of our new council member to get DOT out there. Um, I'm encouraged by um, her, the two uh, deputies that met with me, you know, her studio city deputy and her transportation deputy. um, When we drove around to the 15 different places, Um, And I I will say on a separate note, as um, vice president of the SCRA, um, Alan and Beth Diamond and I had a Zoom meeting with Council Member Rahman on Monday. And um, one of the things she said at the very beginning was that her um, council office strives to be responsive to their constituents. And, um, you know, I just said back to her after she finished, I said, well, and this was January 31st, I said, in the last 31 days, you guys have done nothing but respond to 
everyone, anytime anyone's written anything from what I've heard and my own experience. So I said, you may not always agree on everything, but the response time has been wonderful. So just a little sidebar there. Um, so I see no further comment, I guess, so we can, I'll, I'll ask if I have a second for this. I can second, Barry. This is Abby. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, we have a second and no further comments. So I'll um, take the vote on this. All in favor, yes, or raise your hand, yes. I see yes, Joe, um, yes, Mark, Abby, yes, and I'm yes. Thank you, so it passes unanimous. Thank you very much. Moving on to agenda item number eight. And my page is here somewhere. Here it is. Update on the progress of the remaining board passed preferential parking district applications. Um, and I, I will say today, I figured out one thing on the um, Silver Triangle parking uh, district that was approved and Felix Valdi from um, LADOT um, in October was under the impression that that had all been signed, but he works in the office and I figured out to, after driving by there today, the signs are not in. Um, and I asked Joe about it and she confirmed that as well. And so I wrote back to him saying, yes, but the, some of it may be done, but the signs aren't there. So, um, Joe, did you want to um, add on to this? Is this, ahead, Joe. Um, yeah. is this, are you saying that this is in the works? Yes, because Felix wrote in October, I was looking back in an email, but I didn't, he just listed part PPD 51. And I, I didn't look at, he didn't say which neighbor, you know, which street that were, was. And uh -huh. when I looked, I, I was verifying it today just because I'm trying to get this off our agendas every month and be finalized. And I figured out that was your area, but, um, your cohort port in your area, Th Thomas Vaness, had written me in October saying they were done, but they weren't done on Mound View or Mound View Place um, or your part section of Laurel Terrace where they were supposed to have the signs. So I just, that's why I was verifying with you today. And I sent Felix an email, which he hasn't responded to yet, just uh, saying that Felix, yeah, your uh, email from October said PPD 51 was done, but you should know these streets aren't. So because he's been advised. I guess what I'm confused about is what, what, what was agreed to when we met with Felix and you were there was extending the existing district south on Mound View as we discussed and Mound View Correct. Place. And so when you say the, it's done, it, in other words, I haven't seen any new signs extending that district, though I wasn't looking. In other words, we were gonna be the, just the extending that district. And so I don't know what anyone means by saying it's done because I, nothing was done. Well, he, like I said, he said it in error on an email in October. I see, okay, and, okay. And I, and I didn't, Check to see what 55 was at the time. And now when I was just trying to clear up our remaining ones for tonight's meeting, I looked up 51 and that's where I found that it was Mound View and Mound View Place and part of Laurel Terrace. So I, I and, and you're the ones affected by all the park goers. Um, right. 
you know, not, not respecting your neighbor's na- neighborhood in terms of garbage and everything else that we've, as we've discussed over the years. So um, since it was already approved by city council, and he knows that, I, he was just under the, um, you know, false pretense that this was done and it's not. So okay. um, I Thank hope to you. get him back on track. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. And um, Mark, did you want to mention anything on yours? Um, you you don't have to. I, I don't have anything new. I'll leave it up to you. Yeah, uh, no, not really. There was some communication, but uh, I expect to have a lot more information at our next meeting. Okay, sounds good. All right. Um, any no other comments on number eight? I'll move on to number nine. Update on the progress of the new traffic signal installations at Ventura and Barry, as well as Ventura and Rhodes. Um, you've probably you've all seen. I'm sure the signals are up at some of. They're up on the south side of Ventura at uh, Ventura and Barry. Still to come on the north side. We were hoping for them being turned on this month, but I, I, it's hard to say, but this month or March, let's hope. Um, and we've also, from Council Member Rahman's office, been told, um, as well as Krikorian's office before she took over that area, that May is the turn on time for Ventura and Rhodes with the smart walk um, that has, it's not a full on red, green, yellow light, but um, similar to the light at North Hollywood Park, just north of the Riverside Camarillo intersection. And it has a flashing lights and good things like that. So supposedly that's going to be done by late May. Um, and Mark, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I'm sure you see it driving by, but uh, I checked again today and uh, nothing has been done at Barry and Ventura since last week when they miraculously all of a sudden put in the uh, the southwest and the southeast corner uh, lights. Uh, the southeast corner light extends over the street, but it's turned backwards and the southwest corner is turned 180 degrees away. So both of the lights are facing in the wrong direction. So um, yeah. once, once again, we'll, just, we'll see how long it takes. It seems to go, you know, a little bit of work gets done and then it, it just sits for a long time. So um, we'll see. It's only taken this, like since it must be 10 years since it was first in this committee. It's at least eight, maybe 10. Um, and Mark, have you noticed anything, uh, any work even holes or saw cuts in the concrete on the north side of Ventura at Barry? Uh, no, I, I, frankly, I didn't look over in that direction. Uh, and again, frankly, I don't generally go by there every day, but um, I'll go. It, it seems to me nothing has been done since last week. Okay. Well, so, at, at least they did. Yeah. As, as you say, in, in the realm of six to eight to 10 years, I guess a week or two delay doesn't really count for anything. But, um, um, as I, you know, I sent you all the pictures of it uh, uh, last week or whenever it was. And uh, the fact that the lights went up is, is a huge, huge positive. Uh, I'm still not convinced that, that somebody like, uh, I don't know, our, our friend with the, uh, the noise shop across the street uh, couldn't make a last minute uh, campaign contribution to somebody and, and have this delayed or turned off, but uh, we'll hope for the best. Yeah. Well, and I'm also as pleased to see the um, ramps at that inner, you know, where they, on the south side, they put in pedestrian ramps on the corners. And so it looks, the cement work looks nice on the south side. Yeah, they had so. again. They had they had done that almost a month ago, and I guess that's uh, uh, due to uh, what's it called the uh, uh, you know dis- disabled persons laws. If you're going to have a signal there, you need to have the wheelchair ramps. Right. Yes. Um, okay. Um, anyone else on number nine? 
All right, I'll move on to number 10, comments from committee members on subject matter within the committee's jurisdiction. Go ahead, Joe. I don't wanna bog this down, but I can't help but remember many of the traffic problems that we've discussed in meeting and had people from DOT promise traffic studies, and this was years and years ago. And the traffic, for instance, at Laurel and Max Welton, where the Carpenter students cross, is getting worse. The traffic at Laurel and um, Laurel Terrace and Sunshine Terrace is hair raising and scary for pedestrians. And there were supposed to be traffic studies of those places also, if I recall, Laurel Terrace and a plan for traffic coming. And I think that the pandemic just increased or made bigger the black hole. It's sort of like a memory hole. It's like it's all been wiped out. Also the lack of continuity now that we're switching to a new council member. But I, I don't know, I feel kind of, it's kind of, uh, Frustrating is all I can say, because these problems were are real, you know. Yeah. Well, we may have better luck with a new council person, you know. She's fr fresh to us. She wants to, you know, respond to constituents in a timely manner. Um, and, th and that may help get some things done, although she, you know, she still has to deal in asking the departments to do right. something. So how and much so, she can light a fire under them, I don't know. We already had requests from the person who was in charge at one time of this area of DOT that there would be traffic studies. I remember the meeting, I, I can't remember his name now, him sitting there and saying, yes, we'll have a traffic study at, at um, you know, and it just all, it just all- Well, yeah, what, what's his name? Gallagher, I forget his yes, first name. Yes, Gallagher, Ryan Gallagher. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Gallagher, yeah. And, you know, it's 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 just, uh, I guess I remember, I, my memory's too good or something, but it's frustrating, it's really frustrating. And one other question is, is parking part of the um, purview or an issue that transportation includes? Or is parking yeah. parking another under another heading? Um, Pete, yeah, it is. It is under Department of Transportation, and that and Felix, like for the PPD department, that he works for LADOT. I mean, is it under this committee's? Is that is parking something this committee discusses or, or talks about? Yeah, yeah because that's why we've done PPDs all along. Okay, I just one related other- Related to cars. I had one other concern. Um, we already have with the new houses have less people have um, use, the new designs often use garages for storage and people park in very short driveways and on the street, which is part of the problem. In, you know, a growing problem in park, scarce parking in neighborhoods. Now with ADUs, when I read about ADUs, they're often absolved if they're in certain areas from having to provide parking. And with the new lack of zoning, we could have as many as four units per single lot. Where is the parking is my question. And, you know, how is, is there any, uh, has there been any study about the impact on parking? No, and and frankly, the planning department doesn't care. Um, and no, no, there's no outcry yet from like SB nine. You know, if you can build, um, you know, four units on your single family property and make the garage one of your units, the only restriction on you is that you can't build more than baseline mansionization in terms of square footage. But, um, and, and what's also really strange to me is when, when a new home is built, there's a requirement that a two car garage that's 40 by, I mean, 20 by 20 feet, so 400 square feet, there's a requirement 
for to get the certificate of occupancy to have that garage built and have a cement floor and a garage door that two cars can drive into. The day after you receive your certificate of occupancy, you can convert that garage to um, housing and, and put in the plumbing for a kitchen and a bathroom now. There's also, um, I would just say what concerns me also is that already garages in my neighborhood are no longer garages and there are no carports. And not only are all the cars on the street, but all the garbage, I know I've brought this up, but garbage cans are now kept on the street. Um, yeah. Because there's nowhere to put them and we have more, you know, we have rats and things coming in. And it just seems that there's no um, sort of forward thinking on what the impact well, will be. It's a generational thing, the younger generations don't remember, know nothing else than, than what it is now. They don't remember the neighborhoods in Studio City when everyone had and used their two-car garages. Everyone kept their um, trash cans in the back somewhere, out of sight, not even sight down right, the driveway right. of those trash cans. I, I mean, and, and it's just accepted by anybody you know, under a certain age now that knows nothing else than that. So I, I don't know how we get it back. Okay. Um, go, go ahead, Rudy. <clears throat> thank you, Barry. I just wanted to add that I, I did report the burned out uh, freeway lighting at the Vineland exit to Caltrans several months ago. I think I counted six of the freeway overhead lights out uh, as you exit on the Vineland uh, heading, I guess that's northbound on the 101. Does that sound right? Yeah, and maybe if um, Barry, you could get Caltrans to come back to a board meeting, that would be great. And also if this committee could do more outreach either on next door or what other social medias that the neighborhood council is currently using to educate our stakeholders about how to report these uh, issues with Caltrans. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Richard, go ahead. One thing is that I did have luck with Caltrans District 7 because there were no, all the lights were burned out on Odin where the freeway passes over now the Hollywood Bowl. And they actually came out, I, I did in person, filed a paper inside their building across from City Hall. And uh, Caltrans actually did fix all those lights. First thing they wanted to argue with the city about it, but they ended up just doing it. But what I, the reason why I'm really trying to talk about is that much to my pleasure, I, I'm not seeing all that street racing coming out of the northern side of the 11400 block of Ventura Boulevard. Uh, that would be just west of Tahunga. They were making all kinds of noise and street racing, but I haven't noticed that lately. I don't know what happened. Well, they got a lot of complaints, so I think they knew we were on to them. And, I, you know, we even did a motion to Krikorian's office, and I think they got in touch with them saying, you better uh, calm down, you know. So yeah. go ahead, Mark. Yes, uh, Richard, I live right there at Tahunga and Ventura. And uh, yes, it has, it has gone down since the incredible amount that it was uh, whenever that shop opened up, but it has not disappeared completely by any means. And uh, I don't know if you know, but recently, I think just this past weekend, there was uh, a, LAPD breakup of cruising on Ventur on uh, Van Nuys Boulevard. Uh, I realize that's a different thing than racing, but uh, similar, you know, mass lawless uh, behavior. And there was quite a lot of reports. Uh, they were they were major media reports. I saw it on next door, so I didn't really follow up on it. But there was a huge spate of street racing, I believe, down in the West Hollywood area. So 
it moves around. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm grateful that it's, it's not as bad as it was, but uh, I get woken up almost every night, at least once per night by uh, some car, some incredibly noisy car, uh, you know, just, just uh, revving at red line and moving at I don't know how fast to speed up and down Ventura Boulevard. So again, I'm grateful that it's not as bad as it was, but uh, I don't think by any means that this problem is over. Yeah, well, it was promoted by that store there. And the store were told to cool it. I actually talked to the um, the main van traffic division where the, of the old Camaro plant is, you know, and they said they'd give it extra attention. So who knows what happened? Yes, well, All right. I, yeah. Yes. I, I, again, that it seems that I mean that that was just the incredible over the top thing when that guy advertised on social media come here and have I mean it was called a noise party. So I'm grateful that he uh, listened to whatever input he got or seems to have listened to it. But it it doesn't mean that. Uh, this kind of pop-up impromptu thing doesn't keep happening and we need to keep on it. And given the lack of, of police enforcement of any kind of law in this city right now, uh, this is one that that uh, is, is on my watch list. That's all, thank you. Can I ask what hey. shop that was? Um, what's it called again, Mark? <sighs> I forget the name, Melanie. It's it's just to the east of where Barry joins Ventura. It's on the north side of the street. It's you know this is this is you know the Ventura Boulevard specific plan that all these years later we still have you know these these used car lots and and auto repair places. Um, it got sold about two years ago and bought by um, a guy who I believe. There's two separate shops. There's one that sells or repairs or something. They've just got a nonstop, you know, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Maseratis, those kind of cars out front. And next to that was a repair shop, uh, a, 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 an exhaust shop that specifically modified exhausts so that they'd be loud and they'd, be, they'd backfire. This, this is a hip thing to have. So it's those two shops. And, and the building's painted bright red. So you can't yeah. miss it if you're going by there. Got it's it. Called, Thank um, you. It's called No Limit, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, yes, thank that's you. it. No thank you, Limit. Thank you, Joe. And Joe, did you have something else? No, no. Oh, okay. Also, they, they race on Laurel Canyon, too, every night. Yeah. All right, I will move on to number 11, closing comments by the committee chair. I uh, just was going to mention our next meeting would be four weeks from tonight. Um, since February has 28 days, all the days in March fall on the same day. So it will again be the second, the second of March. Um, and our two motions will be at the board meeting two weeks from tonight at seven for anyone that wants to join besides our board members who will be there. Um, moving on to number 12, adjournment. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, second by Mark. And so all in favor, raise your hands or say yes. I'm a yes. Yes. And Abby. Thank you. Got it. All right. We are adjourned until four weeks from tonight. And uh, remember the board meeting two weeks from tonight. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Barry. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you, Barry. Good night, everyone. Oh, thank you.